Hi, Kapil. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, great to have you here. I'll make a very brief introduction of you, Kapil. Uh, you know, Kapil and I have been working together for about 10 years through various uh, solutions, some MSP, some, supply some within the supply chain. Um, and we're very lucky now to have a very close partnership with Kapil and his team across Asia Pacific in what we call uh, TGC, Guiding Global Collaborative. And Kapil and his team do a lot of great work for us around the Asia Pacific region. Kapil is in Bangalore at the moment in lockdown uh, in a very warm Bangalore. And as you can see, I'm in a very cold Southern Australia at the moment. So Kapil, welcome. Thank you so much, Doug. It's a pleasure always uh, to work with you. Uh, have been uh, associated with uh, uh, Doug, uh, you uh, for quite some time, so certainly have had a great experience. And with Guidance Global, I think uh, Collabora is quite excited with this overall relationship and the way this has been panning out. So uh, we are looking forward to making a significant amount of uh, investment into this relationship and truly make this uh, strategic in nature as far as our business is concerned. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a, it's a lockdown, so never thought that I will be doing a video along with you, Doug. Always, uh, it was a flight away. I mean, we could have uh, we could have easily met each other, but yeah, uh, nevertheless, let's uh, make the most out of this technology and uh, try and uh, virtually stay connected with each other. And so yeah, pleasure on my uh, thanks, Doug. Endure and Transform campaign. Um, we're taking our clients through a journey, um, you know, into COVID and beyond. And we thought from a, you know, Pil, you and I just spoke just briefly before this call, and you said some very interesting things about what your considerations are for the APAC market and where you see changes happening in APAC uh, over the next little while. Do you want to maybe just repeat some of the things that you said? I thought there were some really good messages there. Yeah, sure. So I think uh, it's a, uh, I used to say it's an interesting situation. I changed my statement from interesting to uh, testing situations, uh, uh, testing times, from testing times, it's uh, slowly becoming a little tough time for us, especially in this lockdown. But uh, then certainly uh, we've been we've been observing the market, our clients very closely in the Asia Pac region. Um, uh, barring Singapore, we see a lot of opportunities coming in uh, uh, countries like India, uh, Philippines and Malaysia at this point in time. Uh, these countries, if you look at it, are largely the outsourcing hubs uh, for for a lot of Western countries as well as uh, uh, developed countries like uh, Japan and Australia. So from that standpoint, uh, uh, these countries, uh, I think, uh, are expecting a V-shaped uh, economy bounce back. So it's sliding down, but we are expecting uh, the pace at which it's sliding down, it's going to pick up. The moment the lockdown is cleared up, uh, the moment this dark cloud of COVID uh, gets settled down. So our... Uh, our anticipation to the best of our uh, understanding of the marketplace and uh, the COVID situation is that by by June, possibly this is going to slow down a little and the business is expected to pick up. So from that standpoint, uh, India and Philippines will remain to be the hot destination as far as the outsourcing is concerned, especially when we are looking at uh, the cost uh, saving initiative that most of the uh, Fortune 500 companies uh, uh, must be contemplating at this point in time, uh, looking at the uh, dollar to rupee uh, conversion at this point in time. So India becomes a compelling destination uh, from uh, the cost uh, saving uh, perspective as well as uh, the business continuity perspective as well. So uh, very hopeful, very bullish about uh, uh, these two markets in particular. Uh, Unfortunately, Singapore has been through uh, some of the tough uh, times uh, before COVID as well. Uh, but due to that, Malaysia becomes, again, a lucrative destination because uh, it's a shared services uh, uh, hub for a lot of uh, regional uh, headquartered uh, uh, clients. So from that standpoint, Malaysia will continue to see uh, the upside the moment uh, this COVID situation uh, dies down. So from that standpoint, uh, I think Asia PEC market particularly these two uh, three countries and uh, where Collabra Guidance Global is operating out of at this point in time. We are quite uh, uh, excited and uh, uh, looking forward to the times yeah, when yeah, yeah, uh, say that again. going to open up. And then we, we're, we're currently working 
uh, on, a, on a project with you, um, as you know, and a lot of the contractors have been asked in India to uh, start working from home. And I'm just wondering, you know, certainly from what I've experienced in, in India and other other APAC markets, it's not a it's not a big working from home culture. Um, do you think as we go through this, and I know we're expecting that curve to come up, but do you think as we go through this, that that that, that working from home through COVID will continue with the contractor base? That we can continue to grow our contractors, maybe as we go through COVID, working from home. Yeah. So, uh, so a very, very, uh, very good question. I would say that. So, uh, again, our observation uh, and clients are also reacting uh, differently at this point in time. A couple of them were struggling with the BCP planning perspective. A couple of them were struggling uh, from the infrastructure standpoint. A couple of them were struggling uh, mm -hmm. providing them uh, the hardware devices to connect from their homes. But today, when I uh, look back about uh, uh, four weeks into the lockdown, I feel that a lot of companies have stabilized. A lot of companies have now started uh, using this as the new normal in terms of uh, their day in life uh, at work. And uh, interestingly, a lot of large <clears throat> SI customers have uh, started, uh, uh, you know, witnessing this to be one of the one of the way in life, uh, even for the future uh, uh, engagements and development. So from that standpoint, companies like TCS, Wipro, Infosys, IBM, are really looking uh, forward to this work from home concept and uh, trying to increase the productivity, not just for the COVID, but it could possibly become a new normal. So from that standpoint, they are looking at the cost benefits as well in terms of millions of rupees that they spend uh, for the leases and the large offices that they have versus having uh, this work from home and only 25% uh, uh, attendance to be required uh, uh, for uh, for a professional to just show up in the month. So from that standpoint, uh, I certainly feel that this is going to be um, a transformation in, in the way of working for a lot of people in India. Good part is uh, we had those initial challenges when uh, productivity would take a toss or take a toll when, uh, uh, when people were asked to work from home. But today when I look, including uh, Collabra, I think our uh, producti productivity standards mm. haven't really dropped. So I'm seeing that the that the uh, working population is certainly adopting to this new norm of working. So quite excited. Uh, Infrastructure-wise, India is developing as well to provide the right uh, technology and the right uh, uh, internet bandwidth to uh, support uh, this initiative. So other than some of the security-based uh, confidentiality stuff, uh, which is largely prevalent in uh, the BFSI or the BPO sector. Wow, that's, I think a, that's a big statement. To be okay. Norm. And you mentioned some of the technology. I'm going to put you on the spot. This will be the last question for this series, and we'll we'll come back to you with some more, of course. But um, uh, the technology piece. So, what you, you say you're measuring some of the some of the you know some you know how are you measuring what what technology have you seen in the marketplace that's really uh, you're using possibly more now than you ever have before? That's you, you think the clients might you know might be very useful for our clients. Sure. So, um, largely in the IT space, uh, we see tremendous demand on the security side, whether it's IT security, whether it's network security, whether it is, uh, uh, you know, any of the software security stuff. Security is going to be booming big time. Um, the, the other area that's going to be really blossoming is going to be the cloud side, uh, because a lot of data is out there in the data centers. A lot of companies are contemplating and trying to use uh, cloud instead of the physical data centers where their data is stored. A lot of work would be happening in and around uh, uh, the uh, automation side, right? So this is largely RPA, uh, uh, where a lot of automation would happen because uh, I know automation was at the pace, but uh, looking at the COVID situation, most of the CIOs would be looking automation to be a part of their life. So from that standpoint, a lot of automation related work uh, is going to uh, be coming our way. Uh, other than this, digital uh, engineering work uh, might just go up as well, uh, looking at the overall customer experience. But at this point in time, I think uh, security, uh, automation, some of the cloud-related work is where I see majority of the 
uh, focus uh, focused area for. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Kapil. Uh, I think that uh, we'll call it a night then, uh, and we'll come back to you uh, certainly with a lot more questions as the uh, as we go through this next few months. Uh, remember, it's hashtag Endure Transform. Global we'll we'll collaborator here to help you through this process, through this next few months, and uh, into the future. Uh, take care, Kapil. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon.